You have a seat. And howdy. howdy. My name is Kevin Bear. I'm the college pastor here at our Southwood campus, and it is an absolute honor to join you here uh, this evening, this Christmas evening. Um, we're going to be looking at a story that we've been, we've been talking about this evening, uh, several different moments, and it is the story of, of the shepherds coming to visit Mary and Joseph and Jesus. And so if you have a Bible, it's in Luke chapter 2, verses 8. Uh, and following, and I'm going to read a little bit for us as we jump in. It says this, And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. And when the angels went away from them into the heavens, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened that the Lord has made known to us. I love the Christmas season, and I love it for a simple reason. Uh, you get gifts, and I loved Christmas as a kid because gifts would magically appear in the house under the tree by, by some amazing event, right? And they would all appear there under the tree. They would all be there, and it was an adventure to open each gift. I mean, each gift was a new adventure. I didn't know what I was getting, and it was just exciting, but that changes as you get a little bit older. And as I've gotten older, I realize there's really two types of gifts that I get each Christmas season. One gift um, is the ones I picked, right? Those are the ones that I know that I wanted and I know that I'm excited to get. There's a second type of gift, though, that you get as an adult, and it's this. It's the gift you didn't pick. And you really don't know if you want that gift or not. I mean, it may be a Christmas onesie that you've been hoping for, right, for family. Um, it may be that Christmas sweater. Uh, I remember several years ago, um, I bought my dad an MP3 player back when those things were cool. And, uh, and I remember I bought it for him. I was so excited that he could load up all of his songs onto this MP3 player. And I remember the subsequent next two to three years, I found that gift on a shelf unused. And as I think about this Christmas season, as I think about the greatest gift of Christmas, which is Jesus Christ... I think for many of us, we could respond in the same way with that gift. We may not actually know the significance or the value or how to use the gift of Jesus Christ. And so this evening, I want to unlock that for us. I want to open up and say, this is what this gift is given to us for. And this is how you use the greatest gift of Jesus Christ. And the first thing that I would tell you is this, that this gift is for you. What we see in this story, this section of Scripture, is that this gift is so significant, and this gift is for you. Now, if you're familiar with the story, you probably are. You've watched the Peanuts version. You've seen all of this. There are shepherds at the nativity scene that come to see baby Jesus in a manger. But, I, but the familiarity can, can cause us to miss the impact. See, if, if you were a, a king... Or if you were God and you wanted your message to, to go across the earth, how would you get that message across the earth? I'll tell you what you would do. You would probably pick significant people to carry that message forward. So you would want people of political power, political persuasion, or people with, with, with the right communication skills to get that message forth. But God didn't choose significant, powerful, influential people. He goes to shepherds. Shepherds were were normal, everyday, blue-collar workers. They weren't significant, impressive, powerful, influential people. They were normal, everyday people like you and me. And I think this is so special in this season. See, we would often go to significant people for two reasons. One, to validate us or to give us influence. But God didn't choose influential people that could validate his message. You know what he chose? Normal people. Normal, everyday people like you and me. 
Normal teachers, normal moms, normal employed people, normal unemployed people, normal people with jobs as doctors or or professors, or carpenters, or plumbers, normal everyday people like you and me, and there's something significant you got to get from the, from the shepherds. What we learn from the shepherds is this, that the greatest gift the world could ever get is open for you. But not only is the gift for you, secondly, we see a second part from this story, it's the gift that we most need. Go on to verse 11, it says this, for unto you, Born this day in the city of David is a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. When you go, you'll see the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. And suddenly, there was a host of angels around them. See, this is significant. This is the gift you most need. And there's three things from this section that we see about this gift. The first thing is this, that that Jesus, this one that is coming, is going to be a Savior. See, the Jews hoped, they believed that, that some king would come that some king would come that would actually save them, that would actually set everything right, that would remove the oppression from their lives. There was a belief that someone would have the authority to rescue. And the angels say this is a savior, meaning he has the authority, the kingship to rescue the entire world. But not only does he have the authority, secondly, he has the power. So he says that there was a host of angels The word host is where we get our word, the idea of an army. And so not only does he have the authority of God to bring something to the earth, he has the power of God to bring something to the earth that we need. But thirdly, we see from this section, what is this king with authority and power going to bring? He says he's going to bring peace. See, the Hebrew word peace is so significant. We don't have a good translation for it because it's more than just the absence of what's wrong. It's the presence of what's right. See, when Jesus comes to earth, he's going to bring peace on earth, not merely removing what's wrong. He's going to bring what's right. To have financial peace means you don't merely not have bills to pay. It means you have money to pay the bills. Relational peace means that you not merely not have conflict with someone, It means you have vibrant, life-giving relationships with people around you. Scholastic peace, for those of you in college. It means not only do you not have exams to take. Those were a couple weeks ago. (laughs) It means you have the knowledge, the wisdom to actually take the exams and do well. See, shalom is, is a restoration of everything to how it should be under God. And he says, the angels say this of this king that's coming. He is going to bring the peace that the world needs. Well, who, is, who can get this peace? Well, verse 14 says it. It says this, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Well, how is it that we please God? Well, it's more simple than you can ever imagine. How do we please God? It's very, very simple. You come by faith. Hebrews says that it's impossible to please God without faith. And the simple response for all of us is to come like the shepherds do. As soon as they hear the message from the angel, there is someone that's coming that can restore everything that's broken. I will immediately go. I will leave whatever I'm pursuing and I will go to that king. What is the greatest gift that you can get this year? It's the person of Jesus Christ. He is bringing peace on earth, a restoration of all things, because Jesus won't stay a baby. He'll grow and become a man. And he'll die on the cross for our sins, purchasing for us peace with our heavenly Father, and eventually restoration of the entire world to how it should be. I'll tell you what, the the gift that you get in Jesus Christ is better than any other gift you'll get this season. Because you're all going to get gifts this season. And they'll look something like this. You go to your tree, and you'll open these gifts. And so I have a gift for someone this evening. And so if you are a a kid, I'm going to, sorry adults, uh, but if you're a kid, probably under the age of 10, and I, yeah, sorry. uh, And uh, if you, um, if this is your first time here, raise your hand. First time here, kid, under the age of 10, first time here. Ah. First timers? 
All right, would you like to get a gift? All right, give her a hand as she comes up. All right, what is your name? Emma. Emma, that is so sweet. Emma, would you mind standing right up here, and will you open the gift for everyone to see? All right, come on, Emma. Have you ever opened a present before? Okay, well, you rip into it. You do it. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that is so sweet. All right. All right, get back to your seat. That was so sweet. You're going to have that moment tomorrow morning. And you're going to see the joy on your kids' faces. You're going to see the joy in your spouse's faces. They open gifts and are actually happy. Sorry, bud. That was the uh, last one. And you're going to have this exciting moment when you open these presents. But I'll, let me tell you something about those gifts. And I don't mean to, like, spoil your Christmas tomorrow. But I'll tell you this. The problem with every gift you get... I wish I had another one, buddy. (laughs) The problem with every gift you get is this. That gift can't change you. In fact, that gift will lose its allure by next year. By next year, you're going to be going, okay, what new gift can I have? What next thing can I need? What, what new thing can meet the needs desperate within me? What, what new thing can change me from the inside out? And I'll tell you what, the only gift that can meet your deepest needs of peace with God and peace on earth is the person of Jesus Christ. The only gift that, would, that brings restoration to your relationships The only gift that can really bring you the peace that you long for and need is the person of Jesus Christ. So my my prayer for you, my hope for you this season is that with all the gifts that you give, with all the things that you do, you wouldn't miss the greatest gift that the world could ever receive, the person of Jesus Christ. I'll tell you what, God cared and loved you so much that he stepped from heaven to earth that you might get this gift. See, for many of you, you would, as parents, if you got teenagers, you wouldn't entrust the keys to your car to your teenage daughter. But God entrusted the king of the world to a teenage couple. Why? Because he loves you. He wants a relationship with you. He wants to know you. And he is restoring everything. So my prayer for you is you would come to the person of Jesus Christ this season. That you'd be restored. And for those of you that have loved ones that do not know Jesus Christ this season, my prayer for you is that you would pray that your loved ones might know Jesus this season. He lived the perfect life we could not live. He died in a death we deserve to purchase relationship with God. He is the greatest gift you can get this season. Would you pray with me? And as you pray, if there are someone in your mind that doesn't know Jesus this season, would you lift them up as we pray? Lord, thank you so much for this season of Christmas. And I thank you so much that you sent your son to live on earth, to live a perfect life. And Lord, you are indeed restoring everything to how it should be. So Lord, I pray that if there are some here this evening that have never put their faith in you for the forgiveness of their sins, I pray that today would be the day There is no greater gift we could get this season than to know Jesus Christ. And Lord, I know that there are many of us that have family and friends that don't know you this season. I pray that in this moment, we might lift them up and say, Lord, would you draw them to you? And Father, we want to end celebrating because we get the greatest gift that the world has ever seen, the person of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, as we sing our closing song together, would we sing loud and celebratory the coming of the newborn king?